come from Perius. Um, we are doing real functional printing for the semi industry. Um, our products are made and yeah, we made our products for the typical semi application. So the thing that you see here right now is the typical wafer ring, a carrier where SIPs, microchips and other stuff is located when it's going through the production through all these lines. Um, we had the vision that we can definitely speed up the process and make it more suitable and easier with inkjet than with the actual uh, systems that are on the market. The typical competition that we have right now is a sputter, it's a PVD, where you apply material on a full surface everywhere. You don't care about geometry, about scale, about the module itself. With inkjet, so this is the typical <coughs> SIP that I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about packages, it has nothing to do with corrugated or something else. So it's a package is a system, um, a module, uh, a RF, a logic part, a microcontroller. However, covered with a molding, epoxy molding, and then integrated, for example, in your mobile. Our application is doing right this silver coating that you see here. We apply these silver coatings, or these silver coatings are needed to make these components um, ready for the future. So we started this startup and this project um, with the ramping up of 5 gigahertz and, and 5G applications in the mobiles. The frequencies getting higher and higher, the devices getting smaller and smaller. You get EMI shielding problems everywhere, interacts between um, two microcontrollers with, if logic is inside of the devices. Um, the only chance to control this and go into the future and make it smaller is to shield each part. And the other only way to go on is to implement more and more functions in such a SIP. That means you have RF, you have logic, and you have a sender, you have a receiver, everything in such a small module. And how to do this with PVD? PVD will cover the full part. Let's go to the next slide. Um, and if PVD don't want to cover the full part, in this case, you need to place coverlets. You can do it with etching, you can do it with tapes, you can somehow cover the area that you don't want to apply your uh, silver on or your copper on or whatever you apply there. Compared to inkjet, we can reduce extremely the complexity of these kind of processes. You know that we can print selective, you know we can print every shape of inkjet. PVD cannot. So what we have done is build machines, develop materials and develop the processes to get into this market. So Herios is a material company. The semiconductor market is, yeah, that's our daily business. We deliver in there. We have all the certifications and the market access to introduce such a new product to our customers. <clears throat> um, these are some examples that an inkjet can do, which a PVD cannot do. For example, if we talk about conformal coating, that's the typical way, that's PVD is doing this easily. But how about you want to keep this area free because your antenna or your receiver is on the bottom of the SIP. Then you start creating masks, you start to create special tapes or other stuff. Um, or how about such a thing where you have, we call it um, conformal coating, where you leave just an area free. So here is an antenna and the rest is full packed with logic. It's not feasible with such a system or with the PVD uh, without having a, putting a big effort into these masking technologies. And with inkjet, it's, you can imagine, quite easy. The other stuff is typical, yeah, printing, uh, printing some uh, shapes on the top side. That's nothing special for inkjet. But the other very important thing for the semiconductor is accuracy, repeatability, and reliability. So, we're talking about tolerances of plus minus 50 microns that we need to reach on top sides of SIPs and on the side walls. That means that everything needs to fit together. The ink is tailored for the printhead. The printhead has to be reliable. Any kind of deflection over time is not accepted. Yeah. <clears throat> so.
So you get new design freedoms. So when you when you work with these uh, kind of companies, so we call them OSATs, they are mostly located in Asia. It's the production house for the designer houses which are usually sitting in the United States like Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom. However, these designers get uh, design freedom now. So they can design their SIPs and their logics and these system in packages much more with a, yeah, with a wider view of function, not on the um, um, constraints that they have done by the PVD in the past. So the main focus for the industry is always space and ride reduction. So if you think about a mobile needs to be <coughs> extremely lightweight, it needs to be small. Yeah. The rapid design change every year, a new product is coming out. So you can easily quick react on shape uh, changes and other stuff. So it's comparable to all the other industries that you know, if it's packaging, if it's decorative, the same arguments that you have in, the, as I, I would say, the conventional printing industry does fit to the electronic industry. A bit different, there are some more, uh, I would say, light highlighters to uh, reliability and yield, but um, the general stuff is the same. Um, easy scalability, cost reduction. So if we do a good TCO, and that's a realistic TCO, we're clearly cheaper than the actual uh, or let's say on the, on the part, we are definitely cheaper than the te actual uh, technologies that we have there. The customization level is higher, design freedom, like I mentioned. You have thermal challenges, so you can apply thermal areas on SIPs and on other modules where you can place, for example, uh, an adhesive next to it, then again a silver line or something else, so that you have a thermal interface material that, that you apply in such a thing. Yeah, so what have we done? So th this was the introduction. I hope that you understand what we're doing or what's the application. Um, what we have done during the last three years, we are right now acting as a printer manufacturer. Sure, we're not building the machines by our own. Um, we're designing it. We have the know-how. We do the software for it. We do the ink supply design. We do the print engine design. We do the process development. So the whole total solution is done internally at Herios right now, to go fast to the market, to be able to fulfill all the needs of the customer. That means a lot of investment for three years to get there, but I think that the profits that you can make there are huge if you get into this market. Sure, we are an ink manufacturer. Uh, material is our world. We do produce inks already uh, in China, where we have multiple facilities in Germany, definitely in the labs, and Turkey and other, other countries. Yeah. And curing devices, as you know, we have Herios Noble Light, which is a own business unit, not directly connected to us, but sure, we use their knowledge, especially uh, when we go uh, for curing and sintering of our siblings. So we are speed a bit up because I want to throw the equipment. <laughs> Comparison, that's not so important the benefits you uh, talked about already. Here's our ink, a short introduction about that. The silver ink that we have developed is completely solved. So it's a MOD ink, a metal, decompos uh, metal organic decomposition. This ink is particle free. The, ink, the silver is solved in there. No clogging issue, no uh, drying, no open time, no latency to the stuff that you need to discuss about. Um, it's easy to print, uh, has, it forms a very uh, thin layer if you apply only one. So an MOD ink loses 90% of its volume after sintering and curing. Means if we apply only one layer, we start at 100 nanometers and we can go up to 2 micrometers. That's our spot where we want to live in. Um, high reproducibility surely depends on the machine equipment and everything else. And uh, we do fulfill all the requirements, and that's the most important. The semiconductor has a completely different requirement scope than the industries I worked before that was decorative and uh, other, other uh, more graphical industries. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is not that important. You can check on our website. The other big thing that we had to develop was a machine and a system how we can apply and, uh, let's say, approach the customer and show him the right uh, the samples that he believes that our technology is worth to go on with. 
First, we developed the left thing. So it's only an adaption of existing machine. We made our adaption customizations to have a system in the lab to prove that the concept is working and we are able to scale it up later on to the one that you see here on the right side. This machine is already done for real production. So it is still a prototype, sure, but uh, it is already in qualification together with our customers to get onto their shop floor and go into qualification with uh, customer and customer products for the future. And therefore, a one minute video to understand what we're doing here. <coughs> Shows, explains it better than I can explain it. It is a complete production machine. So we place parts from the magazine and we get it out fully printed, fully covered with the silver and the EMI shillings on it. We have implemented all the process steps that we need in there, pre-treatments, uh, the inkjet printing sure, the curing, and multiple sensors, AOI systems, and other stuff that we need to be able to fulfill all the needs of the customer and especially accuracy. Good, that just the size. And now, quickly, the reliability test. That's the last slide. The most important for this industry is reliability and a really high yield. And that's something that we do completely internally. Um, we have passed all tests that we need with our ink, especially on the, uh, on the topic of adhesion. 5B is something you know, these typical scratch tests. You know it from plastics. It's the same on the semi, just called different. Uh, <laughs> So 5B is the best that you can reach, and we reach this after all these. T0 is directly after curing and printing, MSL 3A, U has TCT, HTAC. So if you're coming from this industry, you know what I'm talking about there. So the conductivity stays there. We have no oxidation on the silver laver, and we have a 5B after all these processes. So that's the actual state. Uh, hope that we can push this into the market next year already, uh, or at least go into qualification together with our customers. That's it.